You're watching Daybreak on Trust TV. A quick reminder, you can watch the show on the go by watching and joining our YouTube live stream. You can also follow us across our social media platforms just to keep in touch with uh, some of the content that you love to watch on Trust TV. Now, let's talk about the disquiet uh, that is trailing the announcement of the relocation of some departments of the Apex Bank, the Central Bank of Nigeria, and the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria headquarters from Abuja to Lagos. Well, the Arawa Consultative Forum and other northern groups, including lawmakers at the National Assembly, have voiced their concerns and reservations about this particular move. But just to set the tone of the conversation today, and before we introduce you to our guests, Let's take a look at this report put together by Ibrahim Ismail, who sampled the opinions of some residents in the Federal Capital Territory regarding the planned relocation of the FAN headquarters, as well as some departments of the CBN. The public debate began when the Central Bank of Nigeria said it will transfer some of its department to the country's commercial capital, Lagos. Within the same week, the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria FAN was directed to relocate its headquarters from Abuja to Lagos. Nigerians have received these decisions with mixed feelings and given the proposal different interpretations. I say the development for me is, is a courage. Why I'm saying it is that there are some people working in uh, recite in Lagos, but they are working in Abuja, their families are there. They find it difficult of going and coming. I don't think it's a bad idea, decentralizing certain powers. We're talking of Nigeria. They didn't move it out of Nigeria, you know. So what, what I think is decentralizing certain powers will also create further employment. For all those people thinking that um, he's trying to move the, some of the offices out from, from the north, no, that is, for me, uh, I think is a wrong, that is a wrong statement for them. While some Nigerians support the relocation of some department of the CBN and the Federal Airport Authority from Abuja to Lagos, others shared the sentiments of the Arewa Consultative Forum, which described the move as a deliberate plot against the northern region. It's part of, you know, how to tackle or to block some part of Nigeria as not as concerned. Because they did not did it. So he came and he came, he made a lot of uh, problem in the country. The federal capital territory is inside the area. There is no means of taking one part of the CBN to the Lagos, since it's not the federal capital of the, uh, Nigeria. Better to live this a uh, fan and that CBN in this federal capital. Anybody you want to work with in any state in Nigeria, you come to Abuja to work. The Federal Airport Authority said it will relocate its headquarters to reduce cost and prevent the rot of fans' abandoned building in Lagos, among others. While the CBN reportedly said the reason for this action is to decongest its headquarters in Abuja. Speaking on Trust TV's morning show, Daybreak, a veteran journalist, Suleiman Ubagaya, cast suspicion on the real motive behind the relocation of the said organizations. Unfortunately, just about seven months after taking over power, we are seeing the manifestations of the same rumor that started 14 months ago. You know, uh, it was denied, like I said, on the 30th of mm -hmm. November, and now it's taking a life of its own. It started with the CBN, uh, you know, uh, relocating almost half of its staff to Lagos. However, there are still some Nigerians who believe that this is going to be in the good interest of the country, while others are aligning fears that this is just part of a hidden agenda from the Tinibu administration to weaken the North. Whether the president has a different plan of relocating the nation's capital from Abuja to Lagos, time shall tell. Ibrahim Ismail, Trust TV News, Abuja. Well, as is evident, the reactions are quite mixed. The perspectives differ 
from one point to the other. So let's get right into the conversation and interrogate some of the concerns raised by some of these groups in northern Nigeria who have, you know, a suspicious belief that there is an ulterior motive attached to the planned relocation of the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria headquarters from Abuja to Lagos, as well as some departments and operations of the CBN from Abuja to Lagos. Join us on the program to provide context and perspective is the, in the studio we have with us uh, is Murtala Aliu. He is the former president of uh, the Quantity Surveillance Registration Board of Nigeria and also the former president Institute of Quantity Surveillance in Nigeria. He is also a former minister, power and steel of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Joining us virtually uh, from Birning Kebbi is uh, the spokesperson of the Ariel Consultative Forum, Professor Tukur Muhammad Baba. Professor Baba is also the Dean, Faculty of Social and Management Sciences at the Federal University, Benin Kebbi. Gentlemen, good morning to both of you and thank you most kindly for joining us uh, on the program. Thank you very much for your time thank you this morning. morning. Okay, let's uh, first and foremost start uh, you know, from the studio because we already know the position of the Ariwa Consultative Forum and I'll get to the spokesperson in just a moment. As a Nigerian, where do you stand on this? Clearly this issue, this development is polarizing viewpoints across the country. How do you interpret this decision by the federal government? Well, I think the, the whole matter is uh, a little bit insensitive. Um, the approach by government uh, to similar issues should be to engage stakeholders and explain certain things. You don't just come one morning and... You see, Nigeria has a federal capital. And there are reasons that we have this new capital. Uh, years ago, Lagos was congested and uh, it became impossible to run the business of governance uh, in Lagos. And uh, a decision was taken as uh, early as 1975, actually a little earlier than 1975, because it started during the Gaon's era, um, when we uh, were looking for a place where the government can function properly. And that's the reason we came into the federal capital, uh, come up with these projects. And um, it's a subtle issue that we have the federal capital in, uh, in Abuja. When Obasanjo was in power, when he became the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I also happened to serve in that government. Uh, the Nigerian Port Authority, which was uh, locating then, or relocating to Abuja, was asked to march back to Lagos with the, with the Nigerian, uh, the, the Maza, the Maritime mm. Authority. Yeah. Yes. Authority. They both went back to Lagos. The reason was that, what business do they have doing in Abuja? And I thought uh, the, the important thing about governance is coordination. The relationship between um, those agencies and the centers of, uh, or levers of power control. So the, the, those bodies are now back in Lagos. And I can tell you that it's not, it's not that they are doing, uh, operating nicely there. Yeah. I recall when Adiza Bala was one in her book, said she was uh, made the MD. It took her time to even get accommodation as the MD of NPA yeah. in Lagos. So uh, this is just one aspect. Secondly, I was also in the cabinet when the Nigerian Stock Exchange was remerged. You know, during Abache era, there was the Lagos Stock uh, Exchange and there was the Abuja Stock Exchange. The Lagos Stock Exchange was supposed to take care of the companies floated uh, from the private sector. And the Abuja Stock Exchange was supposed to be for government companies that were privatized. Um, the Abuja government again rematched the two, canceled the Abuja Stock Exchange and made it a commodity exchange, which has not been uh, successful after this time or picked up. So I think the issue is, 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 is a bit frightening to see some reversal of something that has been a settled national issue. And the reasons given by both the CBN and the Nigerian Airport Authority uh, don't sound convincing as far as we are concerned. You don't think it's convincing that they say that more than 60% of its activities are in Lagos and it already has a building in Lagos that can house its operations there that is wasting away. Um, you don't think that those are cogent enough reasons to believe that 60% uh, 
outweighs, um, you know, is, is a good enough reason why we should have the base in Lagos. In fact, it's a weakness in a nation when you have 60% of your operation in one location. It's a weakness. I the mean, isn't Lagos, the economic profile of Lagos, we know that the GDP of Lagos itself uh, outperforms 29 states put together. That is uh, and, 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 and that makes a lot of sense. It's like, it's like your New Yorks and your Londons, they, they, they outperform most countries uh, in terms of uh, air travel or traffic. That's, that's why the weakness is. That's why the weakness is. Where the Investors substantial... are going to where the money is, isn't it? Exactly. Right. And that's, that's why the weakness is. Yeah. You understand? Um, um, most of the banks have their headquarters in Lagos. And um, there are two dimensions to, to supervision. There's on-site supervision and there's the off-site supervision. The staff for the on-site supervision are already in Lagos, as I'm talking to you. And for the off-site, I mean, we are here talking, somebody is going to join us from Berlin KB. So with the modern technology, there's no need to remove all their people to, to one location. And I think the important thing is to try and expand the economy for the benefit of the country. Uh, if, if Lagos has 20 million people, assuming they have 20 million people, that's just... They actually have over 20 okay, million people. That's just about 10% of the country's right. population. Right. Now, if you have uh, the, the, whole, the whole basket you know, uh, placed in one you know, location, and, and that's why everybody will dip his hand, one day we will all relocate to Lagos. Mm. So the issue is issue of coordination. And the relationship between the central bank and coordination at the center is what is important, mm -hmm. not, the, not the activity, not the actual uh, uh, foot on the ground activity. Right, okay. Uh, let's bring Prof into the conversation, the spokesperson of the Arawa Consultative uh, Forum. Professor Mohamed Baba, for, for some people, critics of the position of the forum, they say you're making a storm out, uh, you know, out of a teacup, uh, you're making a storm in a teacup, basically by crying wolf that if your argument is Abuja is, is north and north in Nigeria and Lagos is somehow a different part of the country. That you're only uh, rallying the country or this part of the country, the northern part of the country against President Tinubu when clearly the government is just going about doing its business of governing the country uh, in, in fairness. Let's be clear, the North cannot be undermining President Tinubu because 64% of the votes that made him uh, president uh, came from the North. So it cannot be true that the North is against him. On the other hand, it's actually the other part, especially the Southwest, that makes it look like every move, every the North is counter and has to be countered and has to be rejected. I mean, the whole thing about moving to Lagos is just one aspect. Uh, the central bank moving back to Lagos is just one aspect, as we pointed out in our release, out of a series of events that has been going on. And uh, Alaji Ali has just pointed out, it started with the Nigerian Ports Authority, Shippers Council, Nigerian Stock Exchange, uh, International uh, Nigerian Institute for International Affairs, the railway. I mean, it's been it's been a progression, and uh, when it continues, and there is no stop to it. Obviously, it leaves room for suspicion. For suspicion, that there must be some move behind it. And all we are saying is, bring it out. Let's talk about it openly, and so on. The New York is the financial center of America if not uh, nearly the whole Western world. But the central, the Federal Reserve Bank it does not have to be in, the, in New York. So, I mean, the argument is a double-edged sword that can cut uh, both sides, in my opinion. Right. And, and what do you say to people who say, where is the evidence to show that there is an ulterior motive uh, or something uh, to undermine the northern part of the country because the government has clearly given its reasons as to how this is strategic, this is about saving resources, this is about efficiency, this is about productivity, and also this is in the best interest of Nigeria. So where's the argument to support that somehow Lagos is being favored? The argument to, the, the argument to counter that is in the very reasons we have been given. Now, there seems to be a systematic chipping at the 
listed them. It did not start with this government, for God's sake. It started way back in 1999. So, of course, this government should not feel uh, claustrophobic that is being pushed to a corner. It is not. We just want an open government, straightforward reasoning, and one of the cardinal principles of going back to Abuja, from relocating to Abuja from Lagos, is for a sense of inclusion, for a sense of fairness, and then so that there is equal distance for mm -hmm. all parts of the country wishing to uh, access government services. Well, for, for some people, Prof, uh, from the statement of the Ariwa Consultative Forum, it's clear that uh, Abuja is not the center. Abuja is the north, or Abuja is part of the north. And also, there was northerners who were running the country then who decided to move the capital from Lagos to Abuja. And if the argument was not made before that it was to undermine the southwest, uh, why are we making an argument now that uh, this move to move no, a handful of no, handful of is, a handful of is, government that operations? That is a manipulation. That yeah, is a yeah, manipulation. But, but, but also, you but is, that the military government that made yeah, you have you can only make that argument if the military government that consists that uh, took the decision was cons uh, consistent only of northerners. By the way, just yesterday I said on your channel that the panel, the panel that investigated and uh, recommended Abuja was headed by Southwesterners. And it had everyone that you can think of. Akin Mabokunje played a very, Professor Mabokunje played a very critical role in the selection of this center. That's one. And, uh, you know, why do we have to think of government only in terms of who is in power and where they are from? Like I said, it's not just this government. It's been going political questions. This is a democracy. You know, you, you, you know people should not expect that every decision of government must be taken and accepted by all, and that's all. That's, uh, to me, I think that is putting democracy on its head. Right, okay, uh, so, so it's safe to say that, uh, you know, for, for some people, they say, Prof, why don't you take your advice? Like, you can explain, you can express your displeasure about this decision, but it doesn't make it wrong. That the Tinubu administration, at the end of the day, uh, as far as its own statements are concerned, is taking decisions that's in the best interest of the country. And it is the one in charge, and perhaps should deserve the benefit of doubt that it is doing the right thing in the best interest of this country. Well, then why don't we declare a dictatorship so that the, uh, we have a benevolent dictatorship that decides for everyone. Uh, it's, uh, it's in your best interest, whatever you think. And so that's, that's the argument you are making. And to me, it's, uh, it's unreasonable. Right. That's, okay. uh, yeah. It's not a dictatorship. Okay, uh, let's let's bring the and conversation. Like I said, why why is it seen as why is the reaction of the Ario Consultative Forum just a consultative forum seen as anti Tinubu? When we pointed out, we are pointed out, and we still insist that this is only the latest in a series of moves that raise questions, that brings uh, suspicion, and so on. So why? I mean, the government should not should not feel uh, besieged by anybody. This is uh, this is a democracy, and we we talk, we contribute to enrich the policy making process and decisions that are in the best interest of all concerned. Of course, if you ask me, I would like the central bank to be relocated to my village, but it's unreasonable, and my village people would be would be very happy with me for that. But, you know, it's unreasonable. It's not it's something I even contemplate. Uh, okay. Uh, so let's, let's, let's bring the conversation back and, and bring in uh, Raji Mutala Aliu back into the conversation. I mean, realistically speaking, the operations of the federal government, right, and its institutions, um, more than 90% are still here in Abuja. So what is the big deal? For some people who are saying, listen, I don't see a big deal out of this whole situation. We still have most of the federal operations still here in Abuja. Why is this a source of concern in, in, in your view? The, the issue of that, uh, oh, that's uh, peculiar, is the issue of the economy. Uh, the North is weak economically, and it should not be further weakened. 
And I think that uh, institutions that uh, promote... Weakened by design? Well, either by design or, or not, the issue is, is a decision that will weaken the activities of the economy. I'll give you an example. Because almost or most of the headquarters of the banks are in Lagos, every single transaction you hold, either in Medugri, in Birninkebi, in uh, Oshogo, you know, are registered in Lagos. And so it's, it's, not, um, it's not by, it's by default. It's not by default that um, when, when you see banks declaring profit and paying tax to Lagos, mm. you understand. You find that it's because the activity you do in Geshua is also registered in Lagos. Mm. So I think what we do is um, when we are talking about things like restructuring and so on, these are the kind of things we look at. We look at a situation where you divide, diversify things so that other parts of the country don't feel so changed. Mm. Because the, the truth is when you have um, the, the central bank which coordinates the economy, now located in a further corner, where most of the activities are. You will find that uh, the fewer banks who are weak, mm. that are weaker outside Lagos will have to be reaching out back to Lagos mm. to do that. What do you say answer. to Westerners who say, where is the Nigeria Defense Academy? They say it's in Kaduna. Where are all these other institutions? They say they're in Abuja. And they say all of this is in northern Nigeria. And they're not raising eyebrows in it. So why doesn't it make sense that since Lagos is a part of the Nigerian economy, that at the end of the day, we have... Uh, you know, you don't have the Niger Deltans who are complaining about the location of NNPC not being in the Niger Delta where more than 90% of the oil that wait, comes wait, in comes wait, in I think from. I don't don't so get it, it wrong, it, please. If they're not making that case. Don't, don't get it wrong, please. Hmm. We're not saying that these things are located in the north. Hmm. We're saying they're located in the federal capital of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, if you tell me that the... the which is a part of the north. Which, if you it? tell me that Abuja is... Uh, is uh, is part of the north, mm. um, then I will tell you that Lagos is part of the southwest. You but, understand? but Lagos is part of the southwest. Exactly. But mm. Abuja, Abuja is, 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 is epicenter from every location of the country. But we also know that its location is in the north central part of the country. Is there anybody that, has, that feels so changed mm. by Abuja? Mm. The population of Abuja uh, is, 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 is predominantly northern. No, it's not predominantly northern, please. You wouldn't say it's predominantly I, northern? No, it's not predominantly northern. I have, I, I mean, look at the statistics. Well, if it's not Northern, then why are Northerners making a, 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 you know, a big deal out of this move? Because of, because of accessibility. Mm. If I'm coming from Gombe to this place, mm. uh, it's shorter for me than going to Lagos from here, for God's sake. And the same thing for me from somebody coming from Okwari or from Uyo mm. or, or from, or from, uh, or from uh, Kong Tagora. Mm. You understand? So it's the issue of location we're talking about. And also, not only just location. This is where the control is. This is where the levers of government is. So why do you want administratively? Yes, administratively. But, but, but when it comes to the Federal Airports Authority, the argument is operational. It's not administrative. It, did, you, did, you, did you see the story about the shortchanging of the other ports, like Calabar, like uh, Port Harcourt, like, uh, like Wari Ports, because MPA is located in Lagos? If MPA were located in Abuja, every port would be important, and you but can open are, up. But there are no ports in Abuja. It doesn't make sense to have... What I'm saying is that it's not the location of the... Mm. It's a, that you now look at the whole country, mm. not where you're operating. Mm. Because, because MTA is in Lagos, what is important to you is Apapa, is Tinkan, is, is Snake Island, is all that. Yeah, and you're not concerned about Uyo, you're not concerned about uh, Calabar, mm. you're not concerned about Wari, you're not concerned about Oni Ports, and mm. so on. That's it's, the point. It's, it's, so, it's, it's, like, it's like having... Having a, a gas cooker in a living room or having a bed in a kitchen, it doesn't fit, isn't it? Especially when you, when you consider how the operations need to be close the, to you're, the administration. You are broadcasting to the world, right? not just Abuja. You are here, you are in Abuja. Yeah, but, but, but this is different. No, it's not different. It's not different. Mm. You, can, you can manage the economy, you can manage the banks from here. And like I told you, there are, there are two levels of uh, inspection. Mm. The on-site inspection has already been situated in Lagos, mm. the, the outside inspection, mm. yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, he, he, regarding the movement of some of the operations of the CBN and some of their staff from Abuja to Lagos, the former CBN Deputy Governor, Kinsey Mogalu, said that the Lagos office completed and inaugurated approximately 12 years ago, right? has been underutilized. He ex also explained that the staff at the Abuja headquarters exceed the health and safety limits of the building, hence the need to relocate. And he says he doesn't see any strong basis. It's for, not for, about, it's not for the, about for the, the location. Disquiet. It's not about, I mean, it's not about putting the staff there. Right. 
the issue is about moving departments there. Mm. The issue is about moving departments there. How is this inimical in any way, shape, or form? If the CBN says we can do it, we can have other departments uh, in the in, in Lagos, we as as they do have their zonal operations and things like that. Good, they have zonal operations. They have right. they are, all, almost uh, almost every agency mm. in the federation has zonal operations. So 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 if, okay. if CBN what, says what is we can run what, it what that is happening way? to the to the to the, to the center, mm. the, the office in Gariki mm. that was the original head of the uh, is, is also almost empty. Mm. There's a big clinic by it. Why can't they operate? Why can't the staff move there? Why must they move out? And why then move to Patakot or, or Meduguri or Kano? It's barely eight months um, for the Tunubu administration. Would this same argument have been uh, put forward if it happened under President Muhammadu Buhari and the, and the federal... If you recall, the ACF had not been quiet on Buhari. No, no, I'm, I'm saying with regards to this particular decision, because it feels like we have a southern president and the northern part of the country is unhappy about this move. I mean, not all the northern part, but groups from the northern when part. I, when, I, when I spoke about the Calabar port and the Portacourt port, I'm not talking about ports in Nigeria. Mm. I'm talking about opening up the economy of the north, I mean, of the country. Mm. If you have everything coming in from one location, uh, Lagos, even our red networks, our logistics, and so on, it's suffering. Open up the space, for God's sake. Mm. And then, when the space has been opened, now you are not to recongest it again. You think Lagos is congested because it has the post authority and now fine is going to be relocated and uh, some operations whether those ones are not there they are there or not legends already congested so don't mm -hmm. don't don't further congested that congested part of, of economic activities or, or of everything everyday right. life if you have been in lagos i've mm -hmm. been in lagos recently mm -hmm. and i mean it's not a pleasant way mm -hmm. so the issue of getting ease by going to Lagos is, is not uh, a mm -hmm. good argument. Mm -hmm. And like I said at the beginning, mm -hmm. you see, when, you, when governments or institutions uh, take this kind of decisions without stakeholder engagement, mm -hmm. it brings this kind of thing, suspicion. Mm -hmm. if, if we've been engaged, okay, this is the reason, this or moving this, it will not affect this, it will not affect that, people will understand. But this is how the, the matter of MPA just moved, psh, they moved, now fun. Fun was moved to Abuja mm -hmm. barely two years ago. Mm -hmm. They said, okay, go back. We have uh, empty buildings there. Mm -hmm. So what happens? No, no empty buildings there? Mm -hmm. What about the other airports? Mm -hmm. They said nothing will happen to the operations. Abuja is still going to get service without any sort of hitch. Look, the, the issue is about the location mm -hmm. of management of power. That's all. But, they, but the ones who were voted to run this country... Right? It's good. It's okay. Say that it's okay. They can do it. It's okay. The issue is don't start something, mm. you know, that will, send, that will form a trend. Mm. Another president will come and now relocate it again. And then we become like, it will become like a joke. Yeah, but, but, but you know, these things are not static, as you know, as, as someone who has been in government. As, as a Policies change, directions change, and the realities of uh, the economy change, and you have to move with it, isn't it? Yes, but you see, when it becomes trivialized, mm you know, to the level that everybody who comes to power begins to think out things mm. because of problem. Right. There's a way you can expand your operations. Mm. Nobody says, look, everything should be operated from Abuja. Mm. There's a way you can expand your operation, operations without causing a stir, mm. you okay. know. Okay. We are moving departments. Mm. You want to say, we are moving departments. Mm. Why you say, look, you want to populate your Lagos office? I'm sure there wouldn't have been a problem. But when you're moving, relocating departments, mm. what does that mean? Very soon, they see the governor also will move there. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure there's a plan to do that. But if they do uh, make the decision, I suppose they will have some explanation to it. Let's bring our prof into the conversation. Prof, uh, for, for, for the most part, Nigerians are saying, listen, you just stated the obvious. The North gave President Tinubu, then candidate Tinubu, over 60% of the vote that um, gave him the victory uh, in the 2023 general election. So uh, why not let the man run the country uh, in the best way he knows how to and perhaps offer your opinions about these things without necessarily making it look like he has an agenda against the north because your statement was quite critical about what you think is happening systematically uh, to the northern part of the country and the administration is barely eight months in i think you are missing the point i kept repeating again and again that we are talking about a pattern dating back to 1999, 
we are also talking about a pattern of displeasure with the relocation of Abuja dating back to 1975. You keep bringing me to this regime as if someone is against the regime. Just a little while ago, talking to Murtala, you call him, you call the president a southern president. We don't see it that way. He is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, not a southern pre I, 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 president. I don't recall saying southern I think president. We need some conceptual clarification on that. Secondly, you talk about the north being, uh, Abuja being in the north, predominantly north. Uh, the population is predominantly north, which is not true. Abuja is not north. Abuja is constitutionally the capital of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Let's get this straight. And it's a home for all. The fact that right now, uh, every Nigerian has a home in Abuja. I'm sure every state, every community, if you go in this country, you will find someone who knows someone who is in Abuja. So I think we should get it clear. And I'm not comfortable with you sitting here interrogating us as if I'm talking to some government spokesman from the National Orientation Agency, Radio Nigeria, the NTA. No, no, no. Look, let's not trivialize this to anti uh or anti anything. And, okay. and I'm, I'm comfortable sitting down here listening to you, reducing it to right. such primordial and provincial arguments that right. uh, this is like, how can anybody be against the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria from whom every one of us has a legitimate expectation to make and has a fundamental duty to support him and which we are doing. Uh, Prof, uh, just to be clear, I, I don't recall calling President Tinubu uh, a southern president, uh, but... Uh, oh, you, also, you, also, did, you oh, did, you did, I was listening, you did. Okay, Maybe, I, you I, know, I, after the program, you can listen to the okay. tape, you did. So, and if, then if, you say if, the if, for some, if for some reason you did hear me say... predominantly northern, it is not. Okay. I, I think the point we were making earlier is about the location of, of Abuja, and he did say uh, it's, it's Lagos Southwest. I said it's a fact. Lagos is in the Southwest. And we can also admit that Abuja is in the North Central because that is its category, uh, categorization as far as the uh, six geopolitical zones are concerned. And we do have the, 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 the Northern Emirates system here in Abuja, and that's why I said it's predominantly North. However, I'm, I'm just channeling the arguments of some part of the population. I cannot be seen to be taking any sides, and that's why I'm projecting those concerns that have been raised so that you can provide clarity to some of those um, questions that have been raised. And I'm only channeling them, not because they are my personal opinions or I'm holding brief for the government or the president or I'm assuming that you're against it. But the message comes across as if the federal government has an ulterior motive that is anti-North. And that is why I'm asking those questions in, in that particular uh, manner. But to, to get and your again, take... And here I will challenge you. Here I will challenge you. You just said uh, Abuja is under, under, under the Emirates system. If I will ask, who is the Emir of Abuja? I mean, you are bringing all these conceptually uh, ambiguous statements that make me want to question uh, the perspective from where you are coming. Uh, let me ask you, who is the Emir of Abuja? You said the is under the well, Emirates system. Well, okay, we, we have there's district been heads. resistance to even make a mayor of Abuja, and there you are sitting down across from me, calling it under the Emirates system. We, we do have way, district heads. Emirates prof. system. A we have we level. have district heads. Does it prof. operate? Uh, is it with the constitution? Does it have constitutional power right. and so on? But more fundamentally, Emir Emirate of Abuja. Come on, give me a break. No, 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 no Prof. I, I say that to make the point that they have the district heads that are quite similar to what you would have in Nasarawa, in Kanu, in Adamawa, in Gombe, in other parts of the north. And that is the point I was making, not to suggest it's, that... It's uh, all over. I mean, I mean, I have come from Taraba. We yeah. have uh, the Emirates system. We have the traditional system. They are all over. Mm. It's not unique to anyone. Okay. So, okay. I mean, when you call it Emirate, I mean, is my kingdom an Emirate system? Look, let's, uh, let's keep the conversation logical and uh, emotions free. Mm. 
Mm. Okay. Uh, prof, know, as, so prof, as an academic, me with the Emir Abuja under the Emirate system, you can understand my 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 confusion. I mean, I, I okay. shake my head. What okay. is he talking about? Okay, okay. Uh, maybe we agree to disagree on the terminology, but, uh, you know, I think uh, the point I was making is that there are some similarities. Uh, that terminologies is easy for people. are very, but, very important in, uh, the, uh, in the social existence of people. Right. Language okay. is okay. very, very critical. Okay, uh, Prof, uh, in, in talking Words about... Words have a life of their own. Right. Um, I can assure you, it's okay. my field. Okay. Um, Talking about the position of the Arewa Consultative Forum, did you at any point in time, before you got to this position, as you said, you're talking about something that has been systemic, a pattern that has been developing for over two decades. Uh, was there any sort of um, back and forth in terms of sharing your concerns before going public with this, with the Tinubu administration, uh, to say, listen, we've had this feeling for quite some time, and we think the way you're about to do right now uh, is uh, going to further deepen our suspicion about what has been ongoing for the past two decades. If you have reached out uh, to the government, uh, can you please confirm what the feedback was? No, I cannot, I cannot tell you. That. What I can tell you is that the Arewa Consultative Forum is what it says. It is a consultative assembly that tries to consult each other matters of common interest. Uh, whether we have reached out to the government is not the issue. You don't have to rise to government every time. I'm, not, I'm neither confirming nor denying or anything, but I'm saying we don't have to. I can relate to an issue as soon as it emerges. I don't need mission from uh, you know anybody. Of course, we will reach out to government. It's a government that services the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Of course, we will make input. We have representatives. And uh, we have people in government and so on. You have just said that even the National Assembly is coming in there. So you don't make it. I think I'm, I'm comfortable with your inclination trying to make it as if the Arab Consultative Forum is a political uh, opposition and so on. And all this idea that uh, we don't like the president, we cannot. We cannot afford to. We cannot afford to. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think that was the point I was making, but the, 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 the point is, did you at any Mr. point Daniel, in time... Mr. then today your points are coming out very, very ambiguously. I think we need okay, to be very let, clear let me, on our terms. Let, let I, me, I, I, let I, me, to be honest with you, I'm a bit uncomfortable with some of the... Uh, what I think is the perspective you are coming from, at least in the usage of the words, let me emphasize the Arewa Consultative Forum is not opposed to this government. The Arewa okay. Consultative Forum has the deepest respect for the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The right. Arewa Consultative Forum, unlike many other organizations, would like to make input to the policy process. We are not in opposition. Okay, uh, Prof. If, if I can get if I can get clear. if I can get a word in, uh, Prof. Uh, yes or no? Did the Arrow Consultative sure. Forum share its concerns with the government before yeah. coming public? Can I answer that, please? I mean, he's he's the spokesperson. If he can, yes, just... he's the spokesperson, but right. I'm Secretary General. Right. So I am the one to tell you whether right. I'm, okay. we're reaching out or not. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yes. Um, before when 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 President Trimble was still a candidate. Mm. Um, we invited all the presidential candidates and um, we gave them what we considered as the northern concerns. And we expect that this, I think, that, um, that he will address uh, in the course of his uh, tenure. But also, we have also written him officially now, mm. asking to see him. But we cannot wait until we see him before we react to issues when they are hot in the plate. So we right now, as I'm talking to, we have a letter that is asking for an appointment to see him and discuss not just this, but quite a number of issues that are So you've concerns. jumped the gun? We're not jumping the gun. Like, like Prof said, we're not going to wait for issues that are already 
um, uh, burning issues mm -hmm. and keep quiet until we get. But you didn't hear the, the the administration side of. Uh, they, we're not supposed to look for that. They are supposed mm -hmm. to look for us and say this. They've is released the a statement that you're clearly not uh, comfortable, you know, comfortable with. with. So we've written to say we're going to see the president. As mm -hmm. I'm talking to you, like I said, the letter is already there. Okay. And then mm -hmm. we're, and we're not going to. Let me say mm -hmm. just for the benefit of the future, mm -hmm. we're not going to wait for government to tell come. When we we will if something happens tomorrow, like we're going to react, mm. okay. But in the course of time, we we'll sit down and engage government, and then we we discuss. If matters. I can come in, mm. yeah, sure, Prof. Uh, go ahead. If you allow me to come, if, if you allow me to come in, when uh, bandits, uh, terrorists abducted uh, students from the Federal University of Busan, uh, the Arab Consultative Forum was the first to issue a statement drawing implications to that. Did we need to inform the government before we did that? When there was an incident at Tudubiri in uh, Kaduna State, uh, and we drew attention to that, well, are you saying that we should wait until we inform the government this is what has happened and this is what we are reacting? Come on. This is a democratic country. And like I said, please don't try to make the president as the dictator that he is not. Don't make this political system the dictatorship that it is not. I, I, it's I, I, an I, open conversation. Uh, uh, prof, Prof, now, you, now, now, uh, now I'm uncomfortable so with, 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 with your position because at no point in time did I describe the president as a dictator, so I don't know where that is coming from. But if I can just ask you a straightforward well, question. That is before, that is the, before, that is the before the 20... That I'm when you say, did prof. we reach government, did we reach government before coming public, it means we have no opinion outside I, I never of said, our I only communication asked with if government. You had I only asked if you had an engagement with them. I didn't assume that you need permission because we certainly are not asking for the government's permission to discuss this uh, on national television. But to the political side of it, because you, you've, you've talked about that as if uh, you've talked about, uh, you know, the question whether uh, the Ariel Consultative Forum is not in support of the Tinubu administration. But in 2023, you had a candidate, you supported a candidate that wasn't uh, pre President uh, Bola Tinubu or candidate Bola Tinubu. And that's why the questions are coming up. Is the Ariel Consultative Forum rallying Did we, totally wrong. Did we do that? Totally wrong. Did the we support? Oh, oh, sorry. Forum, he, no, no, no. It was reported. Did we? No, no, no. no, no. Right. We've On never. the other hand, the Ariel Consultative Forum gave yeah. all leading candidates We've never supported any candidates. Right. A never. chance to in speak fact, to in fact, The Ariel right. Consultative Forum did not come out to oppose we, we didn't oppose a candidate, support we didn't support a candidate. candidate. What we did we were was we gave a chance to all the candidates right. to come and tell the country and tell the people what they have. And in fact, it was, a, it was a, it's a, in a collaboration with some other uh, five groups that did that for the first time in this country to put the candidates to say, okay, look, mm. tell us what we do. We didn't, we didn't cite any candidates. So, so, so this reporting that says that the Arrow Consultative Forum uh, said that the presidential candidate of the PDP is endorsed, has been endorsed that as is, a candidate that is more than North. El, That's Northern Elders Forum. Ne never. Er 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 that's not I, I can almost see, I can see your name here on, on the, the Punch forum. newspaper, the reports that uh, uh, no, no, through no. its Secretary General, Murtala Ali, we have never, in a statement we have never, on a Sunday, we have never urged Northerners and Nigerians to vote. And I'm telling you, I'm here. Right. Not Punch, I'm so, here. So, so this I'm reporting that, yes, on February we have 2023 never, we have, is, is not true. We have never supported a single candidate, any candidate. Right. We, we are not partisan. Right. Okay? What we want is a good president for the country. And we made it very clear. Okay? Mm. If we're, look, it's not that we're afraid to support anybody, mm. but it's not in our policy to do that. And we're not going to do that anyway. But we're going to make sure that whoever is going to cover, govern this country comes with an intention to do the right thing. And we'll challenge you. That's why we'll have the, the I mean, the gravitas to challenge you if you do the wrong thing. All right. Okay. Um, just to, you know, clarify, for, for, for Nigerians who are not necessarily interested in the, the regional uh, element and, and of before the you, conversation. Before you do that, sorry. Uh, ju ju just let, me, just let okay. me get to the question, because, um, you know, it's a polarizing issue. You, you heard from our reporting there, where Nigerians are in support, Nigerians are also, uh, you know, against this one. Uh, what is the, 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 the objective way of looking at it? Also knowing fully well that the government has the constitutional power to govern this country, I mean, people can have their opinions. Not every government policy or decision, and I reckon as minister, while you were still serving, not all the decisions uh, that was taken under the Obasanjo administration or even within your ministry is popular or accepted by everybody. But 
you had a perspective that you thought it was the right thing to do and you went ahead and did it. And I suppose that is also an element of leadership that sometimes you have to take unpopular decisions that will in the, in the long run serve the interests of the country. Uh, give us a perspective that, that runs away from the fact that the North is being undermined because for uh, some people that is the wrong way to look at it. Have you read the report right. we released, our release? Have you read it? We, we've read it several times. Now if you read it, right. what, what was said the government should do? In fact, we called on the president to watch out on his agencies. We didn't say the president or the government is pushing those things out. But the agencies are doing that. And we hope it's not uh, a plan by government to do that. If it's not a plan by government to do that, government should watch out and make sure that this is appropriately done. There's nobody pointing finger on the president himself or on government itself. But the issue is if agencies of government are doing that, the government should be sensitive to that. Because you see, this is a democracy. This is a democracy. Mm. And you should be aware of the sensitivity of your voters, period. Yeah, but, but, but also, what if there are other people who are pushing for something different? How do their own uh, People you know, will always agenda... push for different things. Right. At the end of the day, you should use your judgment the prerogative to know, the president as a president, the to yeah. know what is right. Mm. And I'm saying that it shouldn't be a pattern, because it can be a pattern. Mm. That's all. Okay. Uh, Prof, just before we go, uh, is there... Is there an end game here uh, to say perhaps if you have an opportunity to meet with the president, you're going to press on on certain deliverables? And are you open minded to understand why perhaps this move uh, to relocate the headquarters of FAN to Lagos uh, is uh, in the best interest uh, of Nigeria? Are you open to what perhaps uh, might counter your perspective at this point? Of course, we are always open to superior argument if available. Now, again, uh, let me say I'm a bit uncomfortable with your approach. In our release, we pointed out another pattern which I've completely failed to acknowledge. A contract was given for setting up a plant to uh, assemble air firefighting vehicles, which was cited in Katsina. Only recently, the contractor came to say Katsina is not more than a year after the contract was awarded, the contractor is now saying it should be relocated, I got to the south. If you have not seen a copy of the letter is trending on social media, I will send it to you after this program. How do you expect us to, be, to, to react to this? This was a contract, there was a scope uh, clearly defined. The contractor put in a bit, I suppose. The contractor won, and today, one year later, the contractor is saying, oh, Katina is not a good place. We don't have skilled manpower there. Moving equipment from Lagos to Katina is tough. Is this Where was the contractor when the scope were given out? I was saying we should keep quiet over all these things. Of course, we shouldn't. Now, let me go back to your question. We are very, very much open and we'll be very glad if the president will give us audience and will give every organized group an audience to discuss about policy matters in Nigeria with a view to coming out with a solution that satisfied nearly everyone. Of course, not everyone will always agree 100%, but we want a dialogue that will enhance the process of reaching a consensus that will be for the good and welfare of all Nigerians. Right, uh, Prof. It's not a fight. It's mm. not a war. Mm. It's a discussion. It's a debate. And it's uh, civil. Okay. Uh, a very heated and sensitive one for that matter, I might add. Uh, Prof, we're going to have to leave it here for now. I did enjoy the spirited conversation. Professor Tukur Mohammed Baba is a professor, uh, the Dean of Faculty of Social and Management Sciences at the Ferro University, Brinning Kebbi, and the spokesperson of the Ariwa Consultative Forum. As always, a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us on Daybreak Prof. My and also, pleasure. Thank you very much for having right. me. And also, we've been speaking with, uh, here in the studio, Al Haji Murtalali, a former minister of the Federal Republic, minister of, former minister of power and steel, and of course, the general secretary of the Ariwa Consultative Forum, a former president of the Quantitative uh, Quantity Surveyors Registration Board of Nigeria and the Institute of Quantity Surveyors. Uh, former president of the Institute of Quantity Surveyors in Nigeria. Alaji, thank you so much for your time and for your thoughts on this conversation. I really appreciate you very much for stopping by. Okay.